This week on Quadriga, election time in France. All change for Europe? The battle lines are drawn in France's presidential election. The candidates have been rallying their supporters ahead of the first round of voting next Sunday. Incumbent Nicolas Sarkozy, trailing in the polls, is playing up his experience as a leader, saying he's the only one able to steer the country in difficult times. His main challenger, socialist François Hollande, however, says France needs radical change now. But will the vote in France also mean change for the rest of Europe? Your host on today's show, Melinda Crane. It's been an election campaign in France that's seen more than the usual amount of EU bashing. So will the next French president alter not only his own country's course, but also that of Europe? That's what we want to talk about today with three members of the press who've been following the French election campaign closely. Ursula Weidenfeld has worked at several of Germany's leading business publications. She is now a freelance writer, and her latest book looks at the long-term effects of the debt crisis on the euro and Europe. Albrecht Meyer is political editor of the Berlin daily newspaper Der Tagesspiegel. He writes mainly about EU politics, France and Britain. And Pascal Thibault has been covering the European debt crisis and its effects on Germany and France as a foreign correspondent for Radio France International. Pascal Thibault, one German newspaper called this campaign a rivalry in reality avoidance. Would you agree? Yeah, that's true, because uh, there have been quite a lot of critics in, Fran uh, in Germany and also in other countries about this campaign, which is quite... Uh, strange, I think, especially for uh, German viewers or German uh, German people, uh, because of uh, yeah, because a lot of uh, important. Uh, Themes are not uh, well discussed in the campaign. Uh, as uh, we have already heard, uh, the European uh, topics play a, a key role. So we see that, uh, of course, uh, it's not only a, a f uh, it's not only a European a foreign uh, topic, but it's uh, w especially with the euro crisis, it's also a French uh, topic, with also some negative uh, aspects because of these. Uh, Euro or European bashing. It means uh, when everything is uh, is all right, uh, France and the national government is responsible for this success. And if there are uh, negative uh, aspects, uh, uh, developments, uh, the responsible is uh, is Europe. And we saw that uh, some declarations of Nicolas Sarkozy and François Hollande against uh, the Schengen Treaty or about the role of the European Central Bank have provoked also in, uh, in in foreign countries like in Germany some uh, some uh, critical reactions so Ursula Weidenfeld it, it sounds like the EU bashing is almost a way for Nicolas Sarkozy to distance himself from his own politics Yes, it seems so. If, if you remember how he started as a, a European inviting Angela Merkel to his campaign and making everything to show himself as, as somebody who is um, able to solve the European problems. And now he's um, asking how the ECB should change its position into the, in, in the, in the financial crisis. There has, have some, some, have, have been some, some big changes in his campaign and, I think that German politicians are deeply concerned about what he would do if he would be elected as president again. Albrecht Meyer, this EU bashing that's going on, is it really right across the political spectrum in France? Uh, first of all, I think it's got to be noted that uh, Europe is very hard to sell in France anyway. We've seen it in the year 2005 uh, when the, uh, there was the referendum about the European Constitution, and, as it was called, and this referendum failed. So um, the French people are not in general anti-European, I would say, but what they expect from Europe is that there is some protection, and especially then they expect from the, the French state that they should be really uh, protected against the evils, as it were, of, of globalization. And uh, to answer your question, this runs across the, the political spectrum, uh, uh, more or less, especially on the left, uh, obviously, 
There you've got talk about uh, that uh, the fiscal compact, as, as it's been now concluded uh, between 25 member states, has to be renegotiated or something has to be re-added to it as Francois Hollande wants it. And still further to the left of Francois Hollande, you've got uh, people like uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, who is more left than any of the German politicians. He's much more left than Oscar Lafontaine, I would say. Uh, they Actually, they are very anti-Europe uh, skeptics uh, in the sense that they want to uh, renegotiate the, the whole European treaty. And on, on the right as well, you, you've got not that kind of, of uh, critical uh, talk, but uh, as it's been mentioned as well, when Europe can serve as a scapegoat, as we've seen now with the Schengen Agreement, then it does serve as a, as a scapegoat as well, yes. Before we go on and look at some of those political solutions or non-solutions in detail, let's take a closer look at some of the candidates. Nicolas Sarkozy may be on the ropes, but he's as combative as ever. On Sunday, he hammered home his populist message, telling voters the survival of their very civilization was at stake. In a world of exclusive passion for short-term gains and ever more violent confrontations in communities, there could be great tragedy in the future if we don't make important decisions now. But many polls suggest the endlessly energetic Sarkozy has no chance against the leftist leader Hollande, who few thought capable of reaching such a prominent position. Competing for third place are right-wing Front National leader Marine Le Pen, who is popular with younger voters and, according to some, is responsible for Sarkozy's shift to the right. And the firebrand left-wing leader Jean-Luc Mélenchon, who many credit with at least injecting some passion into the campaign. Pascal Thibault, let's start with the incumbent. Nicolas Sarkozy's poll numbers definitely lagging here, but is it really a result of his politics or is it in fact somehow his personality? I think both uh, both aspects play uh, probably a role. His personality, first of all, of course, there is a, a, a quite uh, opposition in the French uh, uh, in the French uh, population against uh, some aspects of his personality. Uh, his uh, relationships uh, with uh, uh, industrial uh, people, uh, his private life also with uh, Carla Bruni. She maybe she also played a, a positive role for him, but I think also uh, it was part also of his. Uh, um, yeah, of his uh, relations uh, with um, yeah superficial um, yeah people, and of course glitter uh, and glamour. Yeah, exactly <laughs> what we call in in French bling bling. Uh, not only in France. <laughs> not only in France, with uh, uh, very expensive uh, watches, uh, for example, etc. etc. Um, or some vacations on the on the on the on the boat at the beginning of uh, of his mandate of a very good friend of uh, of him, and also uh, is uh, this lack of popularity to thirds of the French people before of the campaign uh, uh, had bad opinion about him uh, can also be explained because of the of the results of, of the yeah, negative results of the last five years, especially what uh, what economics um, for it in the what uh, what is um, uh, is uh, what uh, yeah, the results, the negative results about uh, unemployment, for example. And uh, I think these different aspects play a role to explain uh, uh, to explain his uh, very uh, low chances to be uh, re-elected in uh, two weeks now. Ursula Weinfeld Albrecht Meyer told us that many people look to the EU for protection, for a sense of economic security, but of course they also look to their national governments for that purpose. To what extent has Nicolas Sarkozy um, kept the French secure? Well, I think Europe is, is an issue which is hard to sell everywhere in the EU at the moment, and especially in France it is quite quite difficult because um, Nicolas Sarkozy started with promising hard reforms to make France um, a place to play its role in the EU properly and to have the importance France 
um, uh, has to have in, in the French opinion and in, in the French French thinking. So I think um, Nicolas Sarkozy has become a partner to Germany in just trying to make the EU a good place and again for doing business, doing finance, finance and things like that. But he had, I, I think he, he was, was not so successful in um, um, making French people uh, be aware that France has to, to have big changes in uh, the labor market, in, in, in reforms uh, to, to, to make business easier and things like that. And, and people who are expecting protection and um, um, high barriers um, against the, the globalization, I think they would be um, disappointed by Nicolas Sarkozy, but even by François Hollande. In fact, uh, almost all of the candidates seem to be promising the French that their old way of life and the old notion of what France stands for can survive and be maintained in the, in the current era. Albrecht Meyer, is that just another form of reality avoidance? Well, uh, it is, but uh, if uh, a French presidential candidate wants to win, uh, he, as it's two men now, or uh, five years ago, uh, there was a woman as well, uh, Sigolène Royal, he or she, at any rate, has to appeal uh, to the French pride in, in some way and uh, to national pride, and this is very uh, important. Um, but all those topics uh, concerning um, the foreign politics d did not really play a, a role uh, here. Um, I think uh, when, when it comes to the, the question of uh, how the, the Franco-German couple um, should move on in, in the future uh, as well, um, uh, how uh, the Fra France should balance uh, its budget really uh, in, in, in the long term. Uh, these are questions which not uh, really uh, have been tackled uh, in, the, in the election uh, campaign. So, but what I think these are uh, typically not only French, French problems. If you aren't mm. able to, to, to balance your budget, um, you, you have a European problem, and I, I think that that's some some um, peculiar in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the French dis discussion that that um, every, everything is um, looked at as a, a typical as a French problem and a problem only for France. But if France doesn't make doesn't doesn't come 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 along with with its internal problems, it would be a big problem for the EU for the euro. And I think that's the the, the, the special thing about France in, in Germany. If you if you would discuss um, economic reforms in Germany, everybody would be aware that this is um, European issue. Yeah, but, but uh, sorry, just to answer that point, my probably. Uh, when it comes to this interesting comparison between Germany and France, it's got to be said that Germany already has got uh, the reforms behind it uh, with the Agenda 2010 reforms of, of Gerhard Schröder, which... Well, I think there are uh, lots of reforms before, but... <laughs> yeah, but compared <laughs> to, right to France, the, yeah. uh, uh, Sarkozy did actually very uh, little in, in that way uh, as well. The only thing uh, he really can now show for is, is the pensions reform uh, he did. But uh, in, in the long run, uh, France uh, has to even do more reforms. And I think um, if you compare the two candidates, then Sarkozy would be more the one who would like to go along this path. And from, from Hollande, it's known uh, that he is not really uh, a friend of uh, Agenda 2010 style reforms. Let's uh, take a closer look at François Hollande, Pascal Thibault. He's definitely not exactly the charismatic alpha type male you might have thought you would see in a French election campaign. Yeah, that's right. That was also uh, that was also the reason for some some critics against him. It was compared to. Uh, um, how do you say in, Eng in English? Marshmallow. So, uh, <laughs> Marshmallows. So someone who is too uh, too tender, who is not uh, charismatic uh, enough, soft and uh, shapeless. Who is too soft, <laughs> a softy. Someone who is not able to uh, to take hard decisions. For example, uh, during the, the eleven years at the top of the Socialist Party, but he is also it can also be seen as a positive aspect because he is also with uh, this maybe with this lack of charism 
and <clears throat> uh, maybe the contrary of uh, Nicolas Sarkozy, uh, somebody who is uh, maybe not so superficial, uh, somebody who is more able to uh, reach, uh, to, who is more uh, willing to reach uh, a consensus with uh, other partners in France, but maybe also uh, abroad, for example, Germany, and uh, his, his personality also is maybe a, a plus also con to convince the, the French people to have a normal president. It was also something he, uh, he often uh, said, I will be a normal president. It, what, and of course it meant Sarkozy was not a normal president. And, uh, of, and of course there is this personality, maybe this lack of charism, and uh, another critic was also the 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 fact that he never had um, uh, a responsibility in the government in the past uh, compared to, to Sarkozy, for example, which has been a, a critic against him, especially in the last weeks when Sarkozy wanted to present himself as the the big uh, uh, the, the big solver of the European problems, uh, and Hollande would have been, in comparison to Sarkozy, a, a little provincial uh, politician from the Corrèze, from, from a little department in the center of France, unable to uh, cope with uh, very big issues in Europe and, uh, and in the world. So you're telling us essentially it's an anti-Sarkozy election, it's, yeah. uh, and Hollande is, so to speak, the, the perfect anti-Sarkozy. Yeah. And uh, excuse me, there are, there are also quite a lot of polls which, which show that French people don't want to have Sarkozy be re-elected, but they are not convinced uh, that Hollande would be a better president. So it's more, if Hollande wins, uh, it will probably be uh, a vote against Sarkozy and not for Hollande. And that's, of course, a risk for the next uh, weeks and months. Uh, maybe there could be quite soon a disillusion in France if uh, Hollande is not able to... Um, uh, to realize some of his uh, of his premises. The famous day after problem. Let's get to that in a moment. But Ursula Weidenfeld, if we're looking for charisma in this election campaign, we might find more of it on the wings, on the extreme right and extreme left. Yeah, but I think um, charisma is, is not the... Um the main thing people vote for at the moment, if you look at Angela Merkel, she's not um, some, somebody who who is extremely charismatic. Or Mario Monti is not somebody who is. Um, uh, well, okay, but 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 I think it's at the moment people are looking for persons who. Um, they think are able to solve the problems. And um, I, I think the, the, but the show that's time the case, is... Why haven't they been talking about the real problems in France? Well, I think that um, Francois Hollande started with promising people lots of things. Thousands of new teachers should be hired. Uh, the pens pension aids should be reduced to, to 60 years again. And these are um, promises he has to fulfill if he, he would be re-elected. And this is not a problem of charisma or not. This is real policy, po po politics. So I think um, they have, pe people are looking for persons who they think will fulfill their promises and not so much making the big show and doing things like um, uh, being charismatic, having blood, sweat and tears uh, speeches and things like that. Abish Meyer, a lot of people had thought before the election campaign began that Martine Le Pen, the daughter of the famous Front National founder, uh, would possibly bring the far right quite into the forefront of the election. That hasn't entirely proven the case. In fact, Jean-Luc Mélenchon on the left has stolen quite a bit of her thunder. What do you make of that? Well, they're, they're both those candidates, they are now around about 15% or so. Uh, uh, that is uh, Marine Le Pen and Jean-Luc Mélenchon. And uh, uh, yes, it's true. At the beginning uh, of the campaign, it has been thought that Marine Le Pen, because she is such, uh, so much more moderate than her father, can uh, gather much more uh, votes. But um, at the same time, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, uh, the candidate from the left, uh, really has chosen her as a particular target. And I think that has uh, diminished uh, her vote uh, somewhat uh, as well, because they're both fighting for the same camp, uh, as it were. They're both 
uh, are fighting for workers uh, to, to vote for them. And uh, I think especially the hard attacks uh, from, from the left uh, um, have uh, led to the fact that Marine Le Pen didn't fare so well as uh, she, she hoped for in the beginning. Having said that, though, um, she has set the agenda somewhat for, for Nicolas Sarkozy because uh, all this talk about uh, this absurd talk about halal uh, meat and uh, immigration. It's Islamic it's, uh, butchered meat. Yes, uh, there was some debate of uh, to what extent uh, the meat which can be bought in supermarkets in the Paris regions is halal meat or, or not and this occupied the, the debate for, for uh, several days. It's, it's really, as I said, it's absurd. But this is due to her as as well, so she somewhat uh, coined the election some p campaign, but didn't really succeed and get uh, more than 15%. Uh, that's what the polls say at the moment, at any rate. Pascal Thibault, could one say that Mélenchon has done the same with François Hollande, forced him more to the left than he might otherwise have been? Um, yes or not. I mean, uh, in the, especially in the last days, we saw that uh, in his uh, speeches, Hollande made some, um, some declarations and he made some speeches which probably were more left than in the, in the last weeks. And probably the, the competition with, uh, with Mélenchon uh, players all, uh, played a role in this, uh, in this little uh, change. Um, because, of course, it's, uh, there is a... There is a, a a consequence of these of the of the success of Mélenchon is uh, for the constitution after the elections of the new government and for the par for the for the uh, for the parliament uh, elections in in June. It means which uh, role will uh, play uh, Mélenchon's uh, party and which influence it will have in the on the new uh, left wing government if Hollande wins the wins the election. It means, uh, but. As Albrecht already have told, there's there's an, a positive aspect maybe about the, the quite uh, successful campaign of Mélenchon. At the beginning, he, he, he should have uh, become on only more or less eight percent. It that he was uh, he was able to um, to attract uh, workers and. Uh, um, and also the more or less the same voters uh, the Front National uh, try uh, tries usually to to reach and uh, and to to uh, to keep them or to bring them back in the in the leftist uh, camp. I and the, I, I think the question is who will get the the, the the votes of the people who are disappointed by the economic development of France and even the social development of France. And clearly both the extreme right and the far left are appealing to the people <clears throat> who feel insecure, who have the sense that their lives have become precarious. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I think so, yes. I think that um, people who, who, uh, who fear that they will be the losers of the development, not only of France, but even of Europe, they fear of inflation, of um, just being um, in a situation when they, they, they aren't be able to, to, to uh, have themselves uh, in a secure position, I think they will um, probably be the first to vote extremely on the right or extremely on the left. It's worth remembering, of course, that employment at this point is, what, at around 10 percent, Pascal yeah, exactly. Thibault? And, and it, doesn't, it doesn't change um, in, the, the, in the economic development. It's, um, it's uh, not, not a problem of growth in France. It's a problem of the labor, labor market constitution. Yeah. So we, we have 10 percent unemployment and we have, for example, uh, more or less 25 percent unemployed young people. And uh, what uh, some polls showed is that under young people, uh, Marine Le Pen would become uh, uh, more or less 25 percent, I think 25 or more percent of their votes. Uh, and it, it, it shows that th those people will think they don't have a right uh, place, they don't have a future in the French society and also in the French uh, labor market, they, um, they choose a, a protest party like the Front National or maybe Mélenchon, uh, what would be better, I think, for the political um, 
political future of France uh, better than uh, the two big parties, uh, the Sarkozy party, UMP, or the, the, or the socialists. But, but, but both ways would, would mean uh, a way into um, more or less political isolation of France within Europe. Mm, but I, it's got to be said, though, in order to... to uh, put this into perspective. In the first round of every election <coughs> campaign uh, in France, is always as if the French play a little bit revolution uh, as well. So that, that you have these candidates cropping, cropping uh, out of nowhere who become famous for some weeks. Uh, like five years ago, we, we uh, had this postman, Olivier Besancenot, who, who became uh, a famous uh, communist candidate and, and then he was forgotten about. And uh, so w one shouldn't really. Uh, overestimate all which is being said now during this first round because when the second round uh, comes as well then both the two candidates and it's likely it's going to be Sarkozy and Hollande will have to move to, to the middle ground uh, as well and although as it's been said now all these realities uh, have been actually put to the side during this whole campaign uh, he who wins will, will have to face them very quickly soon soon afterwards though so I wouldn't really um, put too much value on, on many of the things which, which, are, which are being said especially for instance by uh, Hollande when it comes to uh, uh, taxing the rich to a high percentage uh, of, of uh, 75%. Well, well, I think he has, to, it, he has to deliver. He has to deliver. Taxing the rich will not, will not solve France's no, problems, no, but it's just he has a tiny, to deliver. a tiny share that actually will be touched uh, by that kind of tax, and it will really bring so much uh, money into uh, yeah. the, the French coffers either. But it's, it's a uh, symbolic it's, measure. It's, more it's like a that. symbol, really, yeah. All of you have said repeatedly that France is facing very real, very large economic problems and that reform will be essential. Interestingly enough, reform was a topic in the beginning of the election campaign. Nicolas Sarkozy even talked about Germany as a role model and asked Angela Merkel to do some campaigning for him. What happened to that um, couple that was dubbed, at least for a while, Merkozy? <laughs> Just a few months ago, Merkozy was inseparable when it came to Europe. But more recently, Sarkozy has been distancing himself from Berlin. Now he's broken one of Germany's greatest taboos by suggesting a new role for the European Central Bank. The ECB, he told French TV, should not just be there to maintain stability, it should also be promoting growth. In the French campaign, austerity is not considered a vote winner. Socialist Hollande is also saying cutting back is no way to end recession. But he's gone a step further. His promise to renegotiate the fiscal pact aimed at preventing countries from running up debts has alarmed bond markets. Some commentators even predict an Hollande victory could lead to the end of the euro. Ursula Weidenfeld, as we heard there, Monsieur Hollande has said that he would probably renegotiate the growth and stability pact at the very core of European Union reform. Is that really feasible? I think that's a real danger for Europe because um, uh, if, if, if you can ask whether that was um, right or not to, to do something like the fiscal pact, but this pact is, um, is, is negotiated now by the governments and if you try to change it or to, to make additions to it or what, whatever. Um, that would be the question for 27 European countries or 25 if you just exclude um, the two of them who, who didn't subscribe. But if you start with that, you will have new uh, conditions for the euro the euro politics, you will have new conditions for the role of the ECB in the financial crisis of Europe, and you will have new, um, a new basis for um, the European negotiations about who will pay for whom. And I think that would be a big, a, a real large danger for, for Europe and even for France, because France isn't as secure as um, it, it seems to be at the moment. In, at the moment, markets look, to, look at Spain and Portugal and probably Italy, not, not at France, but they will look at France after the elections. Pascal Thibault, that's a warning that we've been hearing lately from Nicolas Sarkozy. He's been saying if François Hollande is elected, France could go the way of Greece or Spain. Could he be right? Or is he just being an alarmist? 
I mean, as I, as I have already said, it is it was uh, of course is. Um, the, the what he tried all uh, during all the last weeks to show he is a state uh, statesman he is able to cope with the big issues especially in the European Union uh, with the euro crisis and Nicola uh, and with Nic with uh, François Hollande the problems will be uh, worse than uh, with him um, uh, I uh, I think it it belongs to a normal political campaign especially in Frank in France where the debates are much more uh, polarized than in than in Germany, for example. Um, what the fiscal fiscal pact uh, about the fiscal pact? I think probably the solution will be not a renegotiation, but some, but maybe an additional protocol or a chapter uh, to this uh, treaty to uh, calm the French uh, desire, just as it was 1997 when the French socialists uh, uh, won the elections and they also uh, wanted to change the pact of uh, stability uh, for the European, for the Eurozone to become a pact of stability and uh, growth, and they become also an, a little addition to this uh, to this treaty, which but, which didn't that, change quite a lot. It changed a lot. It it, it made Germany and France um, um, uh, not respect the deficit rules in, in 2003 and two, 2004, and that was one of uh, that was probably the beginning and the start of um, something of, of one one part. Of of the European financial crisis we have today, and I think if you if you do something like an addition to to the fiscal pact, it has to be sheer symbolic. If it shouldn't not hurt um, the the way Europe has to go and the euro has to go. Yeah, right. I'm just playing devil's advocate here mm -hmm. briefly. Um, France is certainly not the only country around that saying austerity can become a vicious circle, and. Um, that perhaps what Europe really needs is a little more stimulus and a little less saving. Um, yes, uh, we see these problems now in Spain, actually, at, at the moment, where all the austerity measures are being heeded, but Spain's problem still is being it cannot create enough growth, actually, uh, in order to get out of this cycle, which could uh, become a, a vicious uh, circle then. Uh, so if Hollande wins, uh, what we might see uh, is that he is trying to line up with other countries, probably not with Italy, because Mario Monti, he is very much on the lines of Angela Merkel, but maybe uh, with Spain, Portugal, uh, and, and Greece. And Germany. Uh, if if we come to the the elections in 2013 as well, but I, I wouldn't really uh, see. Uh, uh, François Hollande so much as a spectre, uh, really. Um, I don't think it's so disastrous if something would be added on to this fiscal uh, compact. Uh, this fiscal compact, as it stands, I think, uh, will not be touched. So it will stand there as a symbol for the market that, yes, all the European member states, or 25 of them, or how many sign it in the end of it, really want to balance, balance their budgets uh, in the end. And uh, I think already in Berlin, uh, in uh, the chancellery, uh, people have become much more uh, relaxed about the prospect of uh, François Hollande maybe winning the elections and then s giving something to him. Well, who is g fulfilling that role then for, for growth? It's probably not going to be the ECB. There might be other instruments. It's talk about now the European Investment Bank or what is called project, project bonds, bonds as well. <laughs> so I think there's going to be a lot of talk about it. But this if we are talking about these things, this does not, will not bring necessarily the whole Eurozone apart. I, I wouldn't paint a specter like that with, with uh, François Hollande. The fact is, Nicolas Sarkozy has also been campaigning as if he's running against the European Central Bank at times, Pascal Thibault. Yeah, of course. And uh, that's why, for example, some for, um, two or three weeks ago, I can't remember exactly, a friend, uh, German newspaper wrote uh, Miss Mer Mrs. Merkel have you made the right choice uh, about Sarkozy uh, criticizing the, the Schengen uh, Treaty and, also, and, and now in the last days uh, criticizing or uh, saying the European Central Bank uh, should play um, a more important role uh, to, um, to develop the growth in, in Europe. So uh, he had also made uh, 
I think because of electoral reasons, uh, some some critics again the, again some some basics of the of the Euro European Union, and um, because we because we talk. Um, before about Hollande and the fiscal pact, I am not sure it would be more difficult for Germany and for Mrs. Merkel to work with them than with Sarkozy, especially five years ago. Sarkozy was not a born European. Uh, it was uh, more or less more looking probably to uh, to the USA and then to uh, the to uh, to the to Europe. And uh, I think Hollande in the past worked along uh, with uh, Jacques Delors, the former president of, of the of the European Commission. So I mean it's probably more European and also some, some people uh, in his entourage uh, than maybe Nicolas Sarkozy. And also the, the personality, as I have said before, uh, is personally make, makes maybe the, um, the cooperation, the work with Angela Merkel maybe easier than with uh, Nicolas Sarkozy. So let's, and let's the, wait. The fact is, Ursula Weidenfeld, uh, certainly François Hollande is neither a renegade nor a revolutionary. If you look at his background, he was educated in more elitist and more mainstream institutions than Nicolas Sarkozy. That's right. And, and I think his, his um, announcement that he would, uh, as a president, first vis visit Germany is something which is quite conventional and uh, along the rules of the German-French uh, relationships um, we have had in the past. But I think if, if you look at François Hollande's um, program and look at, he, he said in, in the Handelsblatt these days, um, he would balance the budget up to 2017. And on the other hand, you see what he has wants to ex uh, for expenditure in, in, the, in the next years. Uh, some thousand new teachers should be hired. The pension aids should be re reduced. Um, there are some social promises he made. This doesn't go together, and he will have to decide which way he wants to go. And the, 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 if, if he goes for his promises and tries to fulfill them to, to the French people, he will run, run in big problems with the euro, with the fiscal pact, and with everything. One of his promises he has to break. Albrecht Meyer, sounds like it could be a rude awakening for François Hollande on the day after re-election, if uh, in fact that is yeah, what we, occurs. We've seen that before, if, if he wins, which we all don't know, but um, we've seen that before in French history, actually, when, when François Mitterrand, a uh, uh, socialist, won in 1981, and then he, he went on a spending spree as well for the first two years. And then in 83, curiously enough, he had to follow the German path and then really uh, uh, inaugura uh, install a very harsh uh, austerity policy as well. And uh, something similar might be on the cards for François Hollande, actually. François, uh, Pascal Thibault, it seems like all of you are saying a lot of the EU bashing that we have seen is for purposes of the election campaign, for purposes of domestic consumption and probably also populism. But has it changed French attitudes toward Europe? Has it somehow cemented a negative feeling about the EU? I'm not sure the situation has uh, has changed uh, within these uh, these few weeks. I think, as uh, we have already said, there are uh, some fears in France towards the globalization. Uh, Fren French French people want uh, want to have want a European Union uh, that protects them against uh, dangers coming from from abroad. This, of course, is what uh, Sarkozy is talking about when he appeals uh, against the Schengen Treaty, for, for example. example, or his proposal about uh, by European Act, for example, some weeks ago, etc., etc. And um, yeah, all these uh, fears have been um, yeah have been used or instrumentalized uh, through the different candidates during the campaign. Are these, is the uh, European bashing more important now than it was before? Difficult to say. Uh, what, uh, what, is, uh, what is a real fact is that uh, we uh, didn't have any very important proposals um, or perspectives about the, 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 the about the future of the European Union, as we, for example, had last year here in Germany in the Christ Democrat in the Christ Democratic Party, 
about uh, more integration, etc., etc. Uh, and we say that, and we we can see that France is uh, in France. The role of the uh, of the national state is still remains more important, also for the French socialists more than, for example, than for the uh, German social democrats. And I think uh, what, what even is important is that um, France understands itself as core part of the European Union, and that is something nobody asks, uh, really, really doubts about. Um, it is essential for France to be the, the most important partner to Germany in just tackling the European problems. But Germany, of course, is insistent that the European Union must follow a reform course. Are we going to see a France governed either by François Hollande or possibly Nicolas Sarkozy in the second term ready to assume partnership with Germany in that goal as it has in the past? I think you can't have both of both both things. You have to um, either uh, go for reforms in France and disappoint French people and, and voters, or you have to go for the European path. Germany l tries to um, to re recommend to to the other countries, and if you do that, uh, if you don't do that, you will have big problems in Europe. I think, think the, my, sorry. I think the financial pressure will remain very, very high. Uh, Albrecht already told about the two years at the beginning of the mandate of François Mitterrand 30 years ago. I think uh, it will, uh, if we want to make a comparison, I think it won't, uh, it won't last uh, two years because of the, of the crisis, because France lost at the beginning of the year its uh, AAA, and there will be a new decision a few days after mm -hmm. the election on the 12th of May of a rating uh, agency. So I think uh, there is a big pressure and the necessity of, uh, of uh, dealing with these financial problems uh, will, will remain very strong and, will, uh, and uh, the new government can't... But, but, but what, what are the way France will, will take? I want to give Albrecht Sorry. Meyer the last word on that because <laughs> we're almost out of time. Albrecht Meyer, we used to think of France and Germany together as the motor of Europe. Um, will France be dropping out of the motor? No, I don't think so, but uh, there will be have to be some uh, rethinking uh, once again. I mean, the, the two still be very, will be very important because they bring together the two different conceptions in the Eurozone. The southern countries being represented by France and the northern countries by, by Germany. Uh, so this is going to be the overall importance and it's going to be remain uh, the importance of the couple. Thank you very much. Thanks to all of you and thanks to you out there for tuning in.